replacing autocracies that have been present for generations in countries that often do not offer the full benefits of the internet to its citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, indeed, this has been our topic for debate today. And at the end of the day here, I saw opposition have three integral questions we wish to bring before you today. The first is, have the regimes that have the internet only have massive influence truly followed? Ladies and gentlemen, we heard first talking about China and how they have the internet, and yes, they become more liberal, but the democracies, or rather, the autocracies, still stand. Sure, we can say they become more liberal until the cows come home, but what's at the heart of this argument is that the one party state is still in existence. What's more, Libya and Egypt, while yes, have disposed of their dictators, now have transitional governments. And the thing here is that transitional governments often have the nasty tendencies of becoming permanent governments. Now, they said that, sure, even if these regimes are, you know, tyrannical and autocratic in their beliefs, you know what, why don't you use the internet for another revolution? Ladies and gentlemen, another revolution cannot possibly be the answer to a state that already has so much upheaval. My second question is, what is necessary to see the benefits of the internet? And ladies and gentlemen, on side opposition, we believe it requires proliferation of the internet. We've talked about in depth how autocratic nations choose not to allow their citizens to have the full force of the internet, whether by censorship or by clearly not involving the appropriate infrastructure. And we see here that these nations, even if they want to, cannot due to the integral issues about the pragmatism of my third and final question is speculation versus reality. Ladies and gentlemen, even if we observe their absurd definitions, we notice that their entire case is based upon speculation. We notice their entire case is based upon if these autocratic nations do in fact get the internet, then maybe they will throw down their autocratic governments. But the reality here is that life is happening right now. The internet age is now. And what we see here is that nations around the world, in fact, do not have the internet infrastructure and are, in fact, thriving today. And to ignore it is to ignore the, what this heart of this debate comes down to, ladies and gentlemen. We have shown you time and time again that many nations who are not lack the internet. And in doing so, lack the ability to reap the benefit. Sure, if you look at the definitions and talk about states that have achieved internet capabilities, of course, autocracy is dead. But you have to get the internet to them first. And that's what we feel has been missing the entire day on side proposition's case. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to leave you with one final thought. Enlightenment does not demand improvement. Information does not demand revolution. And the rise of the internet does not demand the fall of a country and an entrenched autocratic government. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have presented a very convoluted debate from both sides due to a definition argument. Now what we are trying to do in this final speech today is ask you three questions and then address it on both sides of the definition and show how all of these points have still fallen on the side of opposition. So the first question that has come up is does autocracy still exist and why? Now the issue here is the opposition has wanted this entire round to argue that autocratic states currently do not exist or has wanted us to argue that these states do not exist in any form currently and proposition refuses to argue against facts that have been laid out against the world and we will argue for the future and the possibilities of what should happen if internet reaches these states. What we realize is that this debate should be an argumentation about what can or cannot cause the overthrow of autocratic states and not whether or not they currently exist on this, in this very moment. So now, does autocracy still exist and why? What we have said to you again and again is that yes, these states exist and are globally recognized and the issue is because these states have not had the access to liberal ideas and therefore have not, have, have not been given the tool to actually revolve.
revolt against the government's bad custom. So the second question is, does the internet play an integral role to social revolt against autocracy? Now what we have said is yes, and this is due to the free flow of liberal ideas, and because human nature recognizes human abuse. So the opposition would like to have you believe that humans can't recognize when their mankind are, is being abused. They would like to believe that people in Venezuela actually think that they shouldn't be allowed to buy milk. Now on side proposition, we happily disagree. We think that people realize that they are lacking certain choices, and no matter what, people will find ways to seek the choice that they should be allowed to make, and therefore act upon them. What side opposition has said is that people are brainwashed, and that they are indoctrinated. And we would say that this is because they lack the internet. And once the internet reaches them, and it will reach them, then they will break this indoctrination that falls upon them. Now, if we even look at opposition definitions, and when they talked about Bronze Age and Nuclear Age, we can see that when the first Bronze Sword was forged, you can't go to another place where they had no idea about this and say, hey, are we in the Bronze Age? What we can see is that this is looking at in retrospect, and if we fast forward 100 years and look back to this moment now, and if we say in 100 years everybody has internet, then we believe that these autocratic states will be gone, and this is because of the internet, which leads into the final question, which is will autocratic states fall? Now, many examples have been brought up in this, which have to do with the Arab Spring. But they talked a lot about religious conflict and how this was a base. But what we see is that the Arab Spring was not a religious reform. What we see is that it was a political reform and therefore had to do with politics. And we see that opposition is continuously misunderstood what actually allowed them to revolt, and that is the internet, and that is the tool. Now, they talked about Venezuela, um, which is a state that is currently actually facing heavy international pressure to actually reform. What they said is that Venezuela has internet, and what we see is that then the people of Venezuela realize the choices that they should be able to make and will then use it in order to act and see the fall of their government. And finally, they talked about China. They said, oh, they aren't protests in China. And we have pointed out again and again that this is because China is currently moving into liberal reform. And they have an improving quality of life, and that is why people have not been protesting, because change is coming, and that they know that these states are unsustainable, and they are waiting for them to fall. So what we can see is that with the internet does come this change. What we see is that the internet does manage to create this motivation for change and this motivation to act. And more importantly, it provides the tool for these people to actually act against their government. And what we see on the uh, point of global intervention that has been brought up is that this does really, the internet provides us hard evidence that we can then act upon. Now, so I often say, well, why are we acting now? And that's because we are still gathering the evidence and we will act. The main point here is that, ladies and gentlemen, these states will fall, and they will fall because of the internet, and not that they currently have not fallen yet. These states are unsustainable, and they will not be able to run once the free flow of liberal ideals reach them. So what exactly have this, has this debate really come down to? We have shown you why the internet exists and how it manages to really affect social reform. We have proven to you that this really is the tool for people to take action and act out against their governments. We have proven to you that once the internet hits, a country, they will realize what they are able to achieve and therefore go out and achieve it. And for these reasons, we proudly oppose.